Please be seated. Ms. Arias, please take the stand. Let's bring in the jury. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Ms. Arias, you are still under oath. Do you understand? Yes. Mr. Martinez, you may continue. Now, when you were 17 years old, um, you moved out of your parents' household and you moved in with Bobby Pilatus, correct? Yes. And uh, you and he began living at his grandmother's house, correct? Um, I believe it was his grandparents, but he called them his parents. And this was in Montague, correct? Yes. And the address actually was uh, 611 North 9th Street in Montague, California, in Montague, correct? I don't remember the house number, but 9th Street is correct. And part of what happened when you were living with him was that um, you and he became much closer, right? Um, we just continued our relationship. Right, but it got to a point, though, that you felt something, right? that something was wrong. Um, yes, oh yeah, that's right. And you felt like something was wrong, and so it was something that was inside you, and so that, that for a period of time you kept it inside you, but there was a feeling that something was wrong involving your relationship with Mr. Juarez, right? It was more than a feeling, but... When you say it was more than a feeling, what are you talking about? Did you see something else, or what? I saw and heard, yes. And you saw... Um, before you did anything, what did you see? Um, he used to talk on the phone a lot with a woman that he was friends with prior to our relationship, that he had been interested, said he was no longer interested, but their conversations were long, um, kind of a little over the line from what I think was appropriate for a boyfriend of mine. So we had this sense that something was wrong. He was talking on the telephone to somebody that he previously knew before, correct? Yes. And this individual was in New Orleans, Louisiana, correct? Yes. And because the conversations took a long time, that was something that sort of gave a rise to you to feel that something was wrong, additionally, right? That, and he had had a prior interest in her. Okay, so he had a prior interest in her, and he was on the telephone, and you believed also that the subject matter that he was addressing on the telephone was something that was also inappropriate, right? Somewhat, yes. When you say somewhat, it means it wasn't. So what are you talking about? What is the subject matter? Don't tell me what he said. What subject matter did they discuss that you thought was inappropriate? Um, it was more, I don't remember a specific subject matter, but it was the tone and the way he spoke to her and that kind of thing. Okay, so now it wasn't the subject matter, it was just the tone that you're talking about, right? No, it was subject matter. I just don't remember what specific subject matter. And uh, as a result of that, one of the things that happened is that you had a car, right? Yes. And uh, you would drive him around uh, occasionally, right? All the time. So you would drive him around then, right? Yes. 
And uh, at some point, one day you were going to go to work, right? Um, yes. And when you were going to work, one of the things that happened was that you and he stopped at the library, right? That's right. And you stopped at the library um, so that he could go onto a computer there at the library and log on and look at whatever it is that he was going to look at, right? Both of us, yes. Well, did you get on that same computer with him? Yes. So at the same time that you're on there, you go onto that computer and you're looking at what's going on, right? Yes, for one period of time, yes. When you say long period of time, how long were you on there? That's a long period of time while you're at the library. I didn't say long, I said one. One period of time, is that what you said? Yes. So are you saying it was just one time? Um, that day, yes. So that day, as I understand what you're saying is you go to the library with him and he gets on the computer and you're looking at this computer too. We get on the computer together. Okay, both of you are get on the computer. Do you use a code, a password, or how is it that it works? Um, there was no code necessary for the websites we were visiting at that moment. So anybody can get on the computers there at the library without a password and get to somebody's, for example, Hotmail account, right? Um, I think there would be a password necessary for Hotmail, but I don't know. You could get on the computer without a password necessary or um, a login in Wairika in 1997 at that time, yes. So you, or that was 98, excuse me. So you, in order to log in, what you're saying is you did or you didn't need a password to get onto the computer? Um, did not need a password to get on the computer. But you did need a password to get onto, for example, a, hot, a specific Hotmail account, right? That's right. Or a Gmail account if that was around, correct? Um, yes. I would think. I don't know about Gmail. Okay, but it was Hotmail back then, correct? Yes. And both of you went onto this computer, and he looked at whatever he was looking at, and you looked at whatever you were going to look at, and then you dropped him off at a friend's house, I think is what you said, right? Um, well, there was one thing that happened in between that. Pardon? There was one thing that happened in between that. I, I understand that you want to tell me about, about, about that, but you did drop him off at some point, right? Yes. And after you dropped him off, you were supposed to go to work, weren't you? Um, yes. That's what you told us on direct examination, right? That's right. And after you went to work, and you didn't tell us about anything that was in between there on direct examination, did you? Um, I don't know. Do you have a problem with your memory? I mean, this was approximately no more than two weeks away. I don't think I have a problem. But you don't remember things that happened two weeks of, within two weeks, do you? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And in this case, you don't, right? Um, I don't remember if I gave you the details. So the answer is not. yes or no. Do you remember? Remember what? What are we talking about? We're talking about the incident. Right. And what what specifically of the incident are we talking about? Um, I'm not sure. So you're having trouble focusing on what's being asked of you today, in addition to having memory problems? Yes. So. When I asked you about what was going on involving Mr. Juarez, you had no problem at least understanding that we're talking about Mr. Juarez, right? That's right. And you had no problem understanding that we were talking about the time that you and he went to the library so that you could get onto the computer and look at the computer, right? That's right. And during that time, after you looked at the computer, you were going to go to work, right? Yes. And on the way to work, you dropped off Mr. Juarez wherever it was that you dropped him off, right? Yes. And after you dropped him off, you, because of whatever reason, decided to go back to that computer, right? That's right. And what you're telling us is that when you went back to that computer, you hit backspace, right? Yes. That's what you told us on direct examination, right? Yes. And when you hit backspace, you were able to access Bobby's Hotmail account, right? Yes. Even though that's password protected, right? Only if you log out. So if you don't log out, you can get right back on, right? As long as you're not logged out, yes. And so in this particular case, the security there at this library is such that, or was such that, somebody, if they didn't log out, anybody could have come in and looked at what was going on, right? Yes. And in this case, that's what you're telling us what happened, right? Yes, he did not log out. Okay. And you didn't think of telling him to log out either, right? By that point, I was on yes another no. computer. Yes or no? No. And with regard to the portion of the Hotmail that you, you were obviously looking at the Hotmail account, the two of you together, right? No. Well, if you need a password to get into the Hotmail account, and you said that both of you were looking at this account. I didn't say didn't, that. 
Well, didn't you tell us that, that you and he went onto this computer together? That's right. And that you were there when he was looking at this computer, right? Yes. And you're also telling us that you need a password to look at the Hotmail account, right? That's right. So while you're sitting there, and while he puts the password in for his Hotmail account, he accesses or looks at his Hotmail account in front of you, right? No. Well, I thought you were sitting next to him. I was at one point. And now you're not sitting next to him when he's looking at his Hotmail account, right? No, I went to my own computer to log into my email. So the answer is no, you weren't sitting next to him when he was looking at his Hotmail account, right? Yes. And you went over to your another computer to look at at this point, right? Yes. How long were the both of you there at the, the library? I don't remember, but it wasn't too long. And after that is when you dropped him off somewhere, right? Yes, at his friend's house. And that's when you had this idea to go back to look at his computer, right? That's right. And did you think of asking him what he was doing? I did ask him. And you weren't satisfied with his response, were you? That's right. You were suspicious, right? Very. And so you were, at that point, very direct about or focused about what you were going to do, right? Yes. You were going to go back to that account, to that library to see what was in that computer, right? Yes. Even though that was not your account, right? Yes. You, in a sense, were snooping in somebody else's mail, weren't you? I guess you could put it that way. No, I want to know how you would put it. That's not how I would put it. Ma'am, is there any other way to put it other than that you were looking at things that were not yours to look at? I would put it a different way. You would put, it's not snooping then, even though that was not your account. That's not how I would put it. I know that's not how you would put it, but that's what you were doing, right? It could be looked at that way. Well, I'm asking how you would look at it. In other words, did you tell Bobby, hey, I'm going to go back and look at your account? You didn't do that, right? No. Uh, you didn't say to him, and then when I go back to look at this account, I'm going to look to see whether or not there are any letters between you and this woman, right? No. And in fact, you didn't tell him, and if I find something, I'm going to print those letters out, right? I didn't know that. Well, you didn't tell him that you, any of that before you went there, did you? No, I did not. And you did all of this without his permission, right? Yes. And so you go back and you tell us that you hit the backspace button and... You're then into his Hotmail account, right? That's right. So how much time passed between the time he was on there and the time that you came back? Well, it's Wairika, so not much time. He wasn't far. Give me a time. It maybe doesn't matter where you are. I just want to know how much time. Between what and what again? What are we talking about, man? We're talking about the incident. Right, and we're talking about where you took him, right? Yes. And we're talking about you coming back, right? Okay. And we're also talking about the time that he logged in initially, right? Okay. And we're talking about how much time elapsed between the time he logged in and the time you came back and hit that backspace button. I don't know. Could it have been an hour? No, it was not an hour. I almost had to be at work like right then. What's that? I had to be to work almost right then. So it was only a matter of minutes. So you decided to, so it's only a matter of minutes. You're saying it was about five minutes then? Objection. Characterizes her testimony. Restate your question. How many minutes? I don't know. I wasn't timing it. Uh, did you, after that, did you go to work and say, hey, I'm not going to come into work? Or did you go back to the library? Um, at what point? At the point that you decide to go back to the library. I went to the library first before going to work. I'm not asking you that. Did you notify work, ma'am, that you were going to be late? Objection as to relevance. I notified them that afterward I did. I didn't notify them that I'd be late. I notified them that I wasn't coming in that night. Right. In other words, you didn't even have the courtesy to tell them that, that you weren't going to come in until after this computer issue was Objection presented. The state. So you didn't tell them that you weren't going to go to work until after this computer incident, Objection. right? Argumentative relevance. It restated the same question. Overruled. Um, after the computer? Is that what you asked? Yes. Yes. I was too upset. And how long did I ask you if you were upset, ma'am? Mm -mm. Is that no? No. So did you then go to the computer and you started looking at it, right? You hit the backspace button, right? Yes. Did it take you directly to his correspondence? Yes. And you started reading things, right? Yes. What was the name of this woman? 
I don't remember. And you did print nickname. out some of the letters, right? Yes. And you believe that they were inappropriate, right? Yes. And they were inappropriate. They didn't have any, they weren't of a sexual nature, were they? Um, no. They were just sort of friendly kind of letters, right? They were beyond friendly. Well, they weren't sexual though, right? No. And they didn't indicate that they had met recently or anything like that, right? They had never met before. And they had never had any sort of, I don't know, physical contact. <laughs> they had, the point is they hadn't met before, correct? Not by that point. They hadn't met before at the point that you are looking at these letters, right? Yes, not by that point. And you then, however, decided that there was a problem here, that he was cheating on you, right? Yes. And that sort of um, validated what you had been feeling, right? Yes, very much. And so you decided to do something about it right then and there, right? Yes. It didn't go into work, right? Um, I did not. You did notify them that you were not going to go into work that day, though, is what you told us, right? Yes, I did. Where were you working? I think I was working at the Purple Plum. And then you went to where Mr. Juarez was, and you started to talk to him about these letters, right? First I printed them, and then I went there with them. You did go to talk to Mr. Juarez, correct? Yes. And you had these letters, and you confronted him with them, with the letters, right? Yes. Ma'am, in your personal life, not the professional life, but in your personal life, you're very direct when you feel that you've been aggrieved, aren't you? Objection argumentative, Your Honor. Oh, well. It depends on how comfortable I am with the person. Well, you were comfortable enough to immediately confront Bobby, right? Absolutely. Because you had a relationship, right? Yes. You didn't waste any time going right to him and saying, look, I have these letters and they're a problem for me, right? I didn't say that. You didn't go to him, you didn't go to him with these letters? I did, but I didn't say what you said. Well, so you told him you were okay with the letters then, right? I didn't say that either. Well, you let him know that you had a problem with those letters, didn't you? I didn't say anything. I handed I, him oh, to him so and he, cried and he read them. So you went in there, you gave him the letters and you started to cry, right? Yeah. But that was after you had not gone into work, after you had sort of gone into his computer, his personal items, and then immediately, within minutes, because Ryrica is very small according to you, you were there confronting him, right? I guess you could say confrontation. No, I don't want you to say, I don't want you to guess at anything. You were there showing him these letters, whether you were saying what or not, you were there, right? Define showing, I just handed them to him. Okay, showing, giving somebody the letters, that doesn't mean showing to you? They were folded up. Giving somebody the letters doesn't mean showing them to that person? It could. It could, well you were there. If you gave him those letters, your intent was for him to look at them, right? Yes. So when you gave them to him, you showed him the letters, right? He reviewed them. Ma'am, did you give him, show him the letters? Yes. Just give them to him. Sustained. After you gave him the letters, he began to read them, right? Yes. And you were standing there, right? Yes. And you did not waste, in other words, you immediately went to see him, right? There wasn't anything intervening other than going to work and letting them know that you were not going to come into work, right? Actually, that's not right. I did go home and get all my things and move it out. Then and I took it over. So you were even more assertive than that. You were not going to put up with any of this. You put the stuff that you had at his house, and then you moved out, right? Yes. That's very assertive, isn't it? Even at the age of 17 or 18, isn't it? Sustained. Well, you didn't waste any time at that tender age, did you? No, I'd never been cheated on before. Ma'am, did I ask you whether you'd been cheated on before? No. I'm asking you whether or not at that moment you made that decision and you moved out, right? Yes. Weren't going to put up with it, right? No. And then you went to talk to him about it, right? Yes. And then you guys broke up about it. Over it. We actually didn't. You stayed with him then, right? Yes. Even though you felt that you had been cheated on, you decided to stay, right? After some talking, I The did. answer is yes or no. Did you decide to stay? Eventually, yes. Eventually means that uh, there was... Uh, 
something that happened in between, and you're telling us that you talked about it, right? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? That's yes. Where did you go when you, with your stuff? Where did you actually spend the night that night after you took your stuff and put them in the car? My grandmother's. And how long did you stay there? I don't remember. It wasn't too long. Was it, was it days? Was it hours? Probably a few days. So after a few days, you decided to get back with Bobby, right? Yes. And that was your decision, right? To get back with him? Yes. yes. That was after talking to him, right? Yes. Whatever it was that he said, and whatever um, thoughts you were thinking, you felt comfortable enough to go back, right? Yes. Additionally, do you remember um, when we talked about Matthew McCartney? Yes. You sort of did the same thing with regard to him, didn't you? Um, in what way? In the way that we're talking about. You Being found more specific. Out, okay. You had a feeling. Do you remember after looking at a photograph? Yes. And based on that feeling, you drove to Crater Lake, right? No. Where did you drive to, ma'am? I drove to Crater Lake, but not based on the feeling. Well, you saw a photograph with a letter B on it, right? Yes. And you believed that something was going on, right? Not at that point. Well, at some point, you did go to Crater Lake. What is it that you learned that, uh, that allowed you to go to Crater Lake? Um, two of his coworkers told me that he was, he was working, with a girl right? named Bianca. Yes. The question. Initial response. Two, a couple was, um, came into my work and they told me that they wanted to tell me something and it was about Bianca. And so you saw the photograph, you heard this, and you immediately left work, right? Um, I went home early, yes. But you immediately left work. Isn't that what I asked you? No, I had to do some side work before I left. All right. How much time elapsed between the time that you heard about this and the side work? Probably five to ten minutes. And so then after five or ten minutes, you left because you were going to go take care of this issue by speaking with Bianca, right? First, I drove to Ashland. Did I ask you where you went? Yes. No, I asked you whether or not you confront or went to speak to Bianca. Did you go speak with her that day? Yes. Didn't you tell us that you drove an hour and a half? Um, I believe it was about that long. And so you weren't going to put up with that either, were you? Put up with what? Well, what is it that we're talking about here? Which part put up with? Were you going to put up with what we just talked about? Are you having problems understanding again what's going on? Sometimes, because you go in circles. Well, I'm asking you, did you have any problem knowing that we were talking about Matthew McCartney? No. Did you have any problem that we were discussing Bianca? No. Did you have any problem after you told us that you were at work, right? Did, did I have any problem? Understanding that? No. Do you have any problem understanding that after five to ten minutes you left, right? That's right. And then after five or ten minutes, you went and drove an hour and a half to speak with Bianca, right? No. What did you do in between? I drove about 15 miles south to my home in Ashland. I got out of my stinky work clothes and just threw on some jeans and t-shirt and hit the road. So other than the stop at your house to change clothing, you did go straight to talk to Bianca, right? Yes. Because you, whenever you feel that something's not right, that's your personality, it appears, you are going to confront that person, right? Not necessarily. Or not necessarily. Well, the two occasions that we know of with the two boyfriends, isn't that what you've done? Uh, yes. And so, with regard to Mr. Alexander, sort of the same thing happened back in August of 2007, didn't it? No, it was in June. Pardon? June. Well, do you remember talking to us about an incident that happened in August of 2007 when you were looking inside and you saw him kissing a woman? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, that? that incident was August. Do you remember that? Yes. And that you weren't happy with that incident, were you? No. It and you thought you were being courted, right? I was being courted. And you felt that you were being wronged, right? I wouldn't say wronged. Well, you felt strong enough about it to then go confront him the next day, didn't you? I don't even know if it was confrontation. It was well, very non-confrontational on my end. You went to see him, right? Yes. You went to talk to him, right? Yes. You went to clear things up, right? Yes, exactly. You just, don't, you just have a problem with the word confrontation because you say you are not confrontational, right? No, it's because I wasn't allowed to be confrontational with Travis. Well, you're saying that right now, that you're not allowed. How could he possibly control what, how you acted? 
He had that control. You're saying that he controlled you so much that uh, when you were in his presence, you had no free will. That's what you're telling us, right? That's not what I said. Well, you could have left any time uh, you were in his presence, couldn't you? Yes. You did have the opportunity to never go there if you didn't want to, right? Yes. In fact, you moved to Wairika when you wanted to, didn't you? Not when I wanted to, but eventually. Well, wait a minute. You said you were going to leave around March. You talked to him about leaving in March, and by April you're gone, right? Yes. So that's leaving when you want, right? No, I wanted to leave much earlier. Well, you could have made arrangements to do that, right? If I had the financial means, yes. Well, you spoke with your mom about it, didn't you? Eventually. In your personal dealings, you don't waste any time, do you? No, I'm a procrastinator. Oh, so even though these examples indicate that you acted immediately, you believe that you procrastinate, right? I didn't act immediately in August 2007. Well, with regard to Mr. Juarez, you acted immediately, right? Yes, I did. With regard to uh, Mr. McCartney, you acted immediately, right? Yes. And with regard to Mr. Brewer, you acted immediately too, right? Regarding what? What are we talking about here, ma'am? Mr. Brewer never cheated on me, to my knowledge. Well, we're not asking, I'm not asking you about cheating. I'm asking about you getting out of relationships. You did get out of that relationship almost immediately upon meeting Mr. Alexander, right? Um, no. I well, already had one foot out the door on that relationship. But once you met Mr. Alexander, you got back home, and immediately that Thursday, you told Mr. Brewer that it was over, right? Immediately, as in four days later? Yes, immediately, and as in four days later, right? Yes. So you got home on a Sunday, and by Thursday, he was on the outs, right? No, he was well, in the same house. No, by the outs, I mean he was no longer your boyfriend, right? That's correct. So you, when you decide something, you can do it if you want to, right? Yes. And in fact... With regard to, for example, with your mother, you feel that you act the same way with her. If you, there's something about her that you don't like, you act immediately on it, don't you? Yes. And in fact, you were talking about moving. She assisted you or attempted to assist you in moving, right? Yes. She came out in May, right? I'm I sorry, I apologize. Was... She came out in March, didn't she? It was late March or early April. Well. Didn't she come out on Sunday, March 30th of 2008? Sunday doesn't sound right. Okay. But she came out in March, didn't she? Yes. It might have been late March or early April. And she came out, and when she came out, and she was acting in a way that you didn't like the way she acted, right? During part of it, yes. She was making stupid excuses, wasn't she? Um, yes, about her flight. Right. And she was also being negative, right? Yes. And because of that, you made sure that she went back, didn't you? No, that was her decision. So it was her decision after you indicated to her that she was making stupid excuses and that she was acting negative and you didn't need it around you, right? Yes. So in your personal life, ma'am, it appears from these examples that we've been talking about, if you feel something, just again, based on these examples, it looks like you are able to act upon them very quickly. Depends on the individual. Well, I'm saying in these examples that we've talked about, it appears that you've been able to act very quickly, right? In those examples, yes. And so there's an indication somehow that when we were talking about uh, Mr. Burns also, that you acted quickly with regard to him too, right? What do you mean by quickly? Well, you and he are talking on the telephone, correct, at some point? During the beginnings of your relationship, right? Yes. And then you and he um, are starting to text message each other, right? Yes. You almost very quickly decide to make plans to meet him, right? After a few months. Right. And then... Uh, you then decide to drive out there, and you actually do go out to the West Jordan area, don't you? Yes. And on the very first date, first time that you've been alone, you very quickly are having some sort of sexual contact with him, right? No, there was no sexual contact. So you're saying that based on your being on top of him and kissing him, that is not sexual contact? I was on top of him sleeping. Pardon? When I was on top of him, we were sleeping. 
But you woke up and you kissed him, didn't you? After I moved and he adjusted himself. So you're saying he adjusted himself. You didn't help with any of the adjustments. I assisted him, yes. Right. And basically that means putting your hands on his buttock area, right? No, it was his shoulders. So that additionally with regard to Mr. Alexander, you broke up with him at the end of June of 2007, right? Yes. You were able to do that also, correct? Yes. And you did it because of what you believe were trust issues, right? Yes. Let's take a look at what you said about those trust issues. This is Exhibit 479. Um, before we leave the issue involving Mr. Quadis, uh, um, you and he were sexual, correct? Yes. And in fact, you and Mr. Quadis uh, engaged in anal intercourse, correct? On two occasions. So the answer is yes, you did, correct? Yes, on two occasions. Do you know somebody by the name of Richard Samuels? Yes. And he's an individual that was has come out and is assisting in your defense, right? That's right. And with regard to him, you lied to him, didn't you? Initially, I did. No. You, when, you, when he asked you about this issue involving anal intercourse, you told him that the only person that you'd ever had anal intercourse with was Travis Alexander, right? I told him on a regular basis, Travis only. So what you're saying is that he got it wrong then, right? Objection. I'm not saying that. Of world. So are you saying that you did tell Mr. Samuels that you had had anal intercourse with other men? Um, if it was asked of me, then yes, I would so, have told Oh, them. so he had to ask you then, right? In order for you to provide that information. I answered whatever questions he asked. And if he indicates that you did not tell him that, then that would be you not being truthful to him, right? Rephrase. Were you untruthful with him about whether or not you had had anal intercourse with Bobby Flores? No. And you, in, it's your statement that you did tell him that on two occasions you had anal intercourse with Bobby Flores, right? That's not my statement. You, well, did you or didn't you tell him that you had had anal intercourse with Bobby Flores? Objection to ask and answer. Overruled. If it was discussed, I would have told Ma him. Ma'am, the answer if is If it wasn't yes discussed, no. then I didn't tell him. Judge, she's not responding. Yes, she is, Judge. Restate the question. Yes or no, did you tell him that you had ever engaged in anal intercourse with Bobby Juarez? I don't remember if it was discussed. Again, do you have problems with your memory uh, such that you, you can't remember things? Uh, I don't that consider that a problem, but there are things that I don't remember. So you don't consider that a problem that there's a lot of things that you don't remember in this case? Um, in this case, that is sometimes problematic, yes. And with regard to the act itself, and part of the reason I bring it up is that, do you remember in this um, chat that you had with Mr. Alexander, you discussed baby oil? Do you remember that? The Ocean Foundation, what act is he referring to? Distinct. Ma'am, there was an uh, audio uh, conversation that was played uh, that took place on May 10th of 2008. Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember that during that act, this issue involving KY came up? Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember that in it, you discussed how much better KY was than baby oil, right? Yes. And the reason that you were able to say that was because you had experience with baby oil involving Mr. Juarez, right? I think so. Well, we don't want you to think. Isn't it true that when you and Mr. Juarez engaged in anal intercourse, you used baby oil, right? I don't remember that far back what kind of lubricant we used. But you do remember the uh, telephone conversation that you had with Mr. Alexander dated of, uh, May 10th of 2008, right? Yes. And in it you do discuss baby oil and KY, right? Yes. 
Let's uh, take a look at Exhibit 479. I move for the admission of Exhibit 479. 479 is admitted. The yeah. During the relationship, I was very happy, um, you know, and, and it wasn't always perfect. Our relationship was by no means perfect, um, but just knowing him has taught me a lot. Were you happy in your relationship with Travis? Yes, I was. Yeah, during the relationship, I was very happy, um, you know, and, and it wasn't always perfect. Our relationship was by no means perfect. Um, but just knowing him has taught me a lot. Objection, Your Honor. Will we approach? You may. You do indicate that he's an, an amazing person, right? Yes. And part of what's been we've been told about in this particular proceeding is that you've been telling us nothing but negatives about him, correct? That's all I was asked about. That's correct. Well, the answer is yes. That's all you've been telling us about. But he had he is an individual that was uh, somebody that you loved, correct? Yes. And according to you, he was an amazing person. Yes. Right? And. With regard to this amazing person, one of the things that we know is that um, when you broke up, you broke up because you believed that he was being unfaithful to you, right? I knew he was. All right, and you knew that he was being unfaithful because you did, when he was asleep, you went into his telephone, right? Yes. And you looked at what was on his telephone, right? That's right. And you really didn't have permission to do that, did you? No, I didn't. Actually, I did. I'm sorry, I did. Oh, he, while he was asleep, you had permission to go in there? He had offered, here, look at my phone, and I said no. So, right before he went to sleep, he said to you, here, have my phone, look at it? It wasn't right before he went to sleep. Ma'am, right before he went to sleep, did he say to you, here, take a look at my phone? No, not right before he went to sleep. So, you decided, though, to go and look at that phone, though, right? Yes. And when you looked at that phone, you believed that you saw some text messages that were inappropriate, right? I did see text messages that were inappropriate. That you believe are inappropriate, right? They were inappropriate. Right. And in fact, these text messages involved some individuals, some females, right? I assume they were females. There were no names attached to the phone numbers. All right. So it could have been guys. Is that what you're saying? Not likely, but I guess it's possible. So you looked at these uh, text messages, and according to you, the subject matter is what disturbed you, right? Yes. Uh, he was talking about meeting people, right? Yes. And in fact, what you told us was that one of the persons was married, right? No, that was his MySpace. 
Okay, so that was something that occurred back uh, at the time that you and he first started to date, right? Prior to that, it right. occurred a few months prior. But the messages, what did they say? I'm not saying specifically, but what was the subject matter? Um, things referencing specific sexual body parts, interacting with other sexual body parts, things like that, and plans in the making of meeting up at hotel rooms or his house, things like that. And you were very offended by that, right? Yeah, offended would be accurate. Right. And you were so offended that you still decided to go on vacation with him, though, right? Um, that wasn't why. Well, no, you were very offended. You just told us that, right? I didn't say very, but yes. Okay, you were offended, offended, right? I was hurt. Ma'am, didn't you just say you were offended? Offended would be accurate. And didn't you just say it was a good word, right? Yeah, there's many descriptors to use. But you just said just now it was a good word, right? Um, yes, I think. You think? It means you don't remember what you just said? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You just said offended was a good word, and when I used it, then you took issue with it. Is it a good word, or is it not a good word? Um, it depends on how you used it. Well, I'm saying issue. you're the one that I asked you the question that you were offended, and you said offended is a good word, right? That's what you said, right? I think so, yes. So, well, you think so means you don't know, right? I don't know. Well, this just happened. How is it that you are not remembering what you're saying? Because you're making my brain scramble. I'm, again, making your brain scramble. So in this particular case, the problem is not you. It's the questions being posed by the prosecutor, right? No, not yes the or questions. No. Yes or no? I was saying no when you interrupted me. So, no, so in this case, you're looking to point the finger at somebody else again, right? No, it's my fault. Well, you're saying it's the prosecutor that's asking you the questions, and that's creating a problem for you, right? That's not what I said. Well, you said it's the way you're posing the questions. You just said that, right? I don't know. You don't know what you just said, ma'am? Objection argument, Your Honor. I don't know. Didn't it just happen? Yes. So how is it that if it just happened, you can't even remember what you just said? I think I'm more focused on your posture and your tone and your anger, so it's hard to process the question. So the answer is, it's again the prosecutor's fault because you perceive him to be angry, right? It's not your fault. Well, I'm, is somebody asking you whose fault it is? You did. Well, you seem to be pointing it at the prosecutor, right? So you believe the reason that you can't be effective on the witness stand is because somebody is asking you questions in a way you don't like. I think that was a compound question. Ma'am, isn't it true? that you are having problems up on the witness stand, according to you, because of the way the prosecutor is asking the questions, right? Yes. And so according to you, the truth with regard to this issue depends on the style that's being used, right? That's what the truth knows. Objection, argumentative. As characterizes her testimony. Same rephrase. You're saying that you are having trouble telling us, you're telling us the truth from the witness stand, right? Absolutely. You're telling us that you're having, telling, having trouble telling us the truth because of the way the questions are being posed, right? The objection mischaracterizes her testimony. What overall do you mean? I have no problem telling the truth. I'm not asking you if you have a problem telling the truth, but what you seem to be telling us now is that you have problems telling us the truth now because of the way the questions are being phrased, right? That's not right. So it's something else then that the prosecutor is doing that's bothering you, right? I don't know how to answer that. Well, it's something else that the prosecutor is doing that's stopping you from telling us the truth, right? I don't know how to answer that. Why don't you know how to answer that? You're the one that brought it up. You're the one that pointed the finger at the prosecutor, right? Objection, are you the badger? <coughs> Ma'am, you're the one that complained about the way the questions were being posed by the prosecutor just now, didn't you? Yes. And you indicated that the prosecutor's posture was aggressive, right? I didn't say aggressive. You, you indicated posture, though, right? Yes. And there was something with the prosecutor's posture that you have problems with, right? I don't know. Well, no, you're the one that's used the word posture, man. You're the one that said that you have problems with the posture. 
So is it the posture? It's not the problem with your posture. It's that it creates a problem with me processing what you're saying because I'm focused more on your posture than your, the content of your question. So you're saying that you need to take some more time between questions to answer them? Is that what you're saying? Um, sometimes. Well, no. Is that what's going to help your memory to take more time between the questions? Sometimes. What's your answer? Sometimes. Ma'am, with regard to this issue of posturing, do you remember back on July 15th of 2008 when Detective Flores interviewed you? Do you remember that? Yes. And he was sitting down, right? Yes. And his voice was very quiet, right? Um, yes. And when he was asking you these questions and his voice was very quiet, you still lied to him, didn't you? Yes. So it isn't have anything to do with the volume of the question then, does it? As to whether or not you'll tell the truth. I'll always tell the truth. Well, oh, so you'll always tell the truth. So you told the truth to Detective Flores back then, right? I mean here under oath. No, uh, you said I always will tell the truth, right? I said I will always tell the truth. Right. Did you tell the truth? Isn't it true you did not tell the truth to Detective Flores? That's true. Okay. And he had posture or, or a demeanor where he was just sitting back, right? He was leaning forward, but he All was... All right. Sad. He was sitting down, right? Yes. He wasn't standing, right? Mm, not for most of the interview. That's no, right. he wasn't, was he? And the reason you're having problems now, is it because the prosecutor's standing? Um, it's my own internal mental problem, I think. It, well, if it's your own internal mental problem, that means that what you are telling us are inaccurate answers, right? Objection. No. She said she had trouble recalling not telling the truth. This mischaracterizes her testimony and this continued badgering. Sustained as to the first objection, rephrase. Here, are you having trouble because the prosecutor is standing? Having trouble what? What are, you, what are we talking about here? You're talking about the truth. I'm talking about memory. Aren't we talking about answering the questions? You keep saying truth. I'm referring to memory. Aren't we, though, basically talking about you answering the questions? Both regarding answering questions. Right. Isn't that what we're talking about? Um, you keep mentioning truth. I'm not having a problem telling the truth. All right. But you are having problems answering my questions, right? Um, I don't have a problem answering your question if I remember the answer. So, but you just told us that you're having problems answering the question because the pro of the prosecutor's posture. Didn't you tell us that? That's not the direct reason, but that's a trigger. Well, that's what you told us just now, right? Something to that effect. Right. And so, would you like it if I stood over here, like your counsel was asking you the questions? Would that make you feel more comfortable? Yes, Your Honor, improper comment on counsel. Sustained rephrase. Would it make you feel more comfortable if I stood over here and used the uh, lectern, ma'am? Why don't we approach again before he does the same thing over and over again, Judge? Mr. Nermy, are you asking to approach yeah. again with an objection? You may approach. May proceed. Would you be more comfortable if I stood here? No. Would you be more comfortable if I stood back here? Where you stand won't make a difference to my comfort. So, 
What you're saying is that you are hampered in your ability to answer the questions irrespective of where the prosecutor is, correct? At times, yes. Well, that's not how you phrased it initially. You're saying that you are having problems answering the questions because of the prosecutor's posture, right? In that moment, that was correct. So it changes from moment to moment then? Sometimes, yeah. So in this case, it changes from moment to moment depending on what the prosecutor is doing, right? It's not necessarily just dependent upon the prosecutor. With regard to your conversation with Detective Flores back on uh, July 16th of 2008, um, he was pretty much sitting down in a chair back then, wasn't he? Yes. And yet you lied to him then, right? Yes. So it really doesn't have to do anything with the posture or the, where the person is sitting uh, in terms of whether or not you'll lie, right? Again, objection or not, that mischaracterizes her testimony. She said over and over again it deals with memory, not telling the truth. Objection noted overruled. You may answer the question. What was the question? Mike, could you please read it to her? So it really doesn't have anything to do with the posture or where the person is sitting in terms of whether you'll lie. Um, well, sometimes I lied to Travis based on his posture. Objection, Judge. He's not responding to the question. We should Wait another question. So. You understand we're not talking about right now about your relationship with Mr. Alexander. You understand that, correct? I understand we got very off track, yes. Pardon? I understand we got very off track, the subject of my relationship. I'm, I'm asking you whether or not you understand that this line of questioning right now is not about your relationship with Mr. Alexander. Do you understand that? I answered yes. And this is about your ability to answer questions in the courtroom, right? Yes. And. What we're trying to determine is what is it that will allow you to answer the questions from the witness stand from the prosecutor? Um, I thought you had said what will, whether or not it's the truth. It's not about. Ma'am. Which part are you talking about? Ma'am, Mike, could you please read her the question again? We're trying to do it to determine also what it is that will allow you to answer the question from the witness stand from the prosecutor. I don't understand that question. The question is nonsensical. Restate the question. Ma'am, you understand that we want your answers, whatever they may be. You understand that, right? Yes. And you understand that we need as complete answers as possible. You understand that, right? No, that's not the impression I'm getting from you. So, you're th so the question is, so to you, unless you're allowed to ramble on, then you're being restricted, right? No, that's not correct. Well, in this particular case, you're saying that the prosecutor is cutting you off, right? In this particular case, is in this cross-examination, yes. And you're saying that you're not getting a chance to answer the questions fully, right? That's right. Well, let's do this. With regard to you and Mr. Alexander, one of the things that happened was that you and he broke up. You understand that back on June 29th of 2007. You understand that? Yes. The person that did the breaking up was you, right? Yes. And the reason that you broke up with him is because you snooped into his telephone, right? Yes and you did not have his permission on the day that you did it to go into his telephone, right? Not explicitly, no. When you say not explicitly, it means that you, that you did have the, the, uh, his permission to go into the phone. You understand what you're saying, that, right? Yes, at one point I did. I'm not asking at one point. I'm asking on the day that you did it, did you have his permission, whether written or oral, to go into his telephone and look at his text messages? 
Um, he has told me to look in his phone. That so day I guess before, it's just a matter of interpretation. Ma'am, that day before he went to sleep, did he tell you to look into that it was okay to look into his telephone? Not that day. And so you took it upon yourself to look into that telephone, right? Yes. And that's when you saw these text messages, right? Yes. And then that upset you, right? Yes. And as a result of that, you made a decision that the relationship was over, right? Not right that day. At some point, you did make the decision that the relationship was over, right? Yes. But you were upset that he was having these conversations about bodily parts with these other individuals via text message, right? Yes. And you were so upset that you still decided to go on vacation with him, right? That's not why. Well, you still went on vacation with him even though you had this information, right? Yes. And you went to New York, correct? We did go to New York, yes. Pardon? Yes, we did. Went to New York. And then you drove, or you went to a PPL conference also, right? No, it was a, a retreat. And then you went to Huntington Beach, right? That was the retreat I was referring to. Okay, so you went to Huntington Beach after that, right? Yes. And you stayed with him, right? Yes. You engaged in sexual contact with him, right? Yes. Even though you were very upset with what you knew, right? Yes. You chose to go on vacation rather than break up with him at that point, right? Yes. And so the way you see it, it's his fault that you broke up, not yours. A rule to me answer. His fault that I broke up with him? Yes, not your fault. Well, it was my choice, so I don't know what you mean by fault. Well, we're talking about who was to blame. That's what fault means, right? For the breakup? For the breakup. That's what we're talking about, right? I guess we each had a part in it. Well, no. You're saying that it was his fault because he was doing these things with other women, right? His fault for the breakup because he was doing things? The way you explained it to me, ma'am, the reason you broke up was because of something he did, right? That's what motivated me to break up with him. So what you did, the fact that you went behind his back and looked at his telephone had nothing to do with the breakup, right? That was also one of the reasons. So you believe that you were to blame for going behind his back, right? Yes. That was a dishonest thing to do, right? Yes, I felt very bad about it. I, I, did I ask you whether you felt bad about it? No. You know, you say that you feel bad about it, but haven't you done similar stuff in the past? Um, yes. I mean, you did it to Bobby Gladys, right? You yes. went behind his back and you got on the computer, right? Yes. You went behind Matt McCartney's back and you went and talked to Bianca, right? I didn't go behind his back. Oh, you told them that you were going to talk to Bianca before you went to talk to her? I would have. The answer, ma'am, the question is, did you talk to him before you went to talk to Bianca? No, he wasn't available. The, ma'am, did you talk to him before you went to talk to Bianca? No, he wasn't available. Ma'am, you said he wasn't available. That, could you have waited until he was available to talk to him to see if it was okay to talk to Bianca? You could have. Yeah, but it would have been miserable for several days. Oh, so it's all about you then, right? Objection, argument. You could have waited though, right? But you didn't want to. I chose not to. That's right, because you would have been miserable, right? Yes. And you didn't want to be miserable, right? That's right. And so this dishonesty that you said involved Mr. Alexander, you had at least on two previous occasions engaged in the same sort of dishonesty, right? Um, yes. And with regard to 
I take that back. I don't think it was dishonest to go talk to Bianca, so I guess one time, because I do believe that the emails with Bobby was dishonest. All right. But you did engage in con conduct with regard to Mr. McCartney that he did no not know about before you did it, right? Um, with regard to his conduct that I didn't know about? No. I'm asking, the fact that you went to see Bianca, isn't it true? that Mr. McCartney did not know about it before you went to talk to her, right? That's right. So that was behind his back, wasn't it? No, because that implies sneaking around. That was because why? To me, that implies sneaking around, and I wasn't doing that. I was just open and direct about it. You weren't sneaking around. You actually, you just didn't tell him about it, right? That's the distinction that you're trying to draw here. Only because he wasn't available. But that's the distinction that you're drawing here, is that that um, you were not sneaking around, right? I wasn't sneaking around. Overruled. Right? Yes, it was not dishonest. With regard to Mr. Alexander, looking at his telephone or, or look, viewing his uh, text messages wasn't the only time that you actually went to look at one of his communication mediums, right? Yes. In fact, you and he became an item in February of 2007, right? Yes. And uh, you guys, that's when you made it official. You were still living in Palm Desert, right? Uh, yes. And you were living in Palm Desert, but at some point you were able to uh, look at his computer, right? Yes. And you looked at his computer at his house in Mesa, right? Yes. And you looked at his computer, and you started to look at some of the items, what, in MySpace? Is that what it was? Yes, his MySpace emails. Pardon? His MySpace emails. But it was in MySpace, right? Yes. And you looked at some of the emails that were there, right? Yes, I did. And even though you didn't have permission to look at those emails, did you? I don't know. It was kind of a trade-off because he did it to me, so... I'm not asking if he did it to you, am I? No. I'm asking if you had permission to go into his MySpace to look at his emails. No, I guess I didn't. And so again, this is this conduct, this dishonest conduct on your part, right? Yes. And you went and you looked at his emails and you saw some emails between him and at least two females, right? Yes. One of them, one of them involved uh, the New Year's Eve uh, meeting, right? Yes. And that upset you, though, right? Um, not really. Well, it didn't make you happy, right? It didn't thrill me. Pardon? It didn't thrill me. So if it didn't thrill you, that's a way of saying it didn't make you happy, right? Okay. Um, that's right. And, but that happened before you and he were actually officially dating, right? Yes. And so that really shouldn't have had any bearing on how you felt. Would you agree? That wasn't the part that bothered me. I understand that. Uh, okay, what, tell me what is the part that bothered you? Um, he lied about what it was about. He lied to you what it was about after you confronted him, right? Um, no, he called me preemptively to explain. Ma'am, you looked at his MySpace email, right? Yes. Then you and he had a conversation about it, right? Yes. So it wasn't that he had a conversation about it before you looked at his MySpace email, right? About the messages? Yes, we did. So he talked to you about them before? Yes. If he talked to you about them before, then why were you upset? Because I found out that what he said was false. Oh, I see. So he lied to you then, right? About the message. And what you were doing is you were sort of checking up on it, right? Yeah, I was. And that's because you wanted to see whether or not he was cheating on you, right? No, it wouldn't have been cheating in December because we weren't together yet. I wanted to see whether it was accurate, what he Okay, told so anything that he would tell you, you would want to check to make sure that he's being truthful to you, right? That's not right, not anything. Well, things having to do with relationships involving other women, right? Um, sometimes. 
in this case, that's what you did, right? This thing particularly, yes. And this is the other one that involved the e email that you were particularly offended by, right? The other email? Yes. Yes. And you were particularly offended because you said that the woman that was involved there was married, right? Yes, she was married. And what was the woman's name? I don't want to destroy anyone's marriage. So what was the woman's name? Shannon Crabtree Peterson. And so you believe she was married and you believe that they were doing something that they shouldn't have been doing, right? She was married and by LDS standards, what they were talking about was very inappropriate. But all they were doing was talking, right? They were joking about getting together for a right. sexual liaison. They were joking about it, right? I hope it was joking. Well, didn't you just say that they were joking about it? Objection cost was speculation as to whether or not they were joking. Overall, that wasn't the question. You may ask the question. Um, well, he was joking about his wet dream with her. Uh, objection, and Judge. I so asked her whether, isn't it true that you said they were joking? Oh, um, isn't it I true? did say that, yes. And so the reason you said that is because you believe it, right? Um, because he told me later after I confronted him. At the time, I didn't know what to believe. Ma'am, you believe it. That's why you said it, right? When I sit here today, I believe it somewhat. Right. And, and so you believe that they were joking about it, right? At the time, I did not. But now, I think, I mean, if what he told me can be believed, they were joking. Ma'am, isn't it true that you just said that they were joking about it, right? Yes. And that's what you believe, right? That's what I'd like to believe. Well, you are testifying to the truth, right? Yes. And you said they were joking about it, right? That's the third time you asked me that. The answer is yes. And so if they were joking about it, what is the problem? Um, by LDS standards, you're not supposed to have conversations of that kind of nature with someone else's spouse. OK, and that's because you are familiar with the code of conduct involving sexuality in the Mormon church, right? I am now, yes. Well, no, you were familiar with it back in February of, uh, or February of 2007 when you looked at his MySpace account, right? Not all of it, but regarding spouses and their behaviors well, and how to interact with people that are married, yes. Ma'am, you were familiar enough with our code to pass judgment on what was going on, right? Yes. At, as it applies with to the Mormon faith, right? Yes. And this is knowledge that you had gained as part of your learning about the Mormon church, right? Um, well, another Mormon had explained it to me, so yes. So yes, you did learn it, right? Yes. And so you knew that joking about these things was not something that was viewed favorably by the Mormon church, right? That's right. But you believed that just joking about something, you knew, you knew about that. You knew that that's not something that was favored by the Mormon church, right? That's right. But in terms of whether or not sexual intercourse is concerned, you're telling us that at that point, you didn't know if it was acceptable or not in the Mormon church. I'm not saying that. So at that time, you did know then that sexual intimacy, whatever form they may be, was unacceptable in the Mormon church, right? I'm not saying that either. Well, ma'am, did you know back in February of 2007 when you were making these judgments that having oral intercourse was against the teachings of the Mormon faith? At that time, no, I did not know. So you believe that just kidding about things is against the Mormon religion, but not oral intercourse? Is that what you're saying? With a spouse who's married in the temple, yes. So you're saying then that you believe that oral intercourse was okay back in February of 2007, but not kidding between two people. That was not okay. Yes, that's what I was taught. And don't they have brochures that they hand out? Um, yes. And these brochures include 
talking about sexual contact, right? Yes. You were here when Desiree uh, Freeman testified, right? Yes. And one of the things that we know is that even laying or touching or laying on top of, it, on top of somebody with their clothes on, that's against the Mormon teachings, right? That is right. And in fact, that's something that you did with Ryan Burns. You laid on top of him with your clothes on, right? Yes, I did. And that's against the Mormon teachings, right? It is. And you knew that at the time you did that, right? I did not. So you gained this knowledge after being with Ryan Burns then, right? After, well after, about a year after. Right. So this is something that is, you never thought to talk to anybody about how far you could go? I did, I talked to Rachel. Well, I'm asking whether or not, well, Rachel is not somebody that's uh, the end all in the Mormon church, right? I don't think anybody would be. Well, the bishop is a little bit more informed, wouldn't you agree? Yes. And if you had any questions about it, right, you could go talk to the bishop, right? Um, I guess technically, but I wouldn't be comfortable. Well, you're saying technically, but you wouldn't be comfortable. You could go talk to the bishop, right? Yes. In fact, you went to Bishop Layton to talk about Travis Alexander's killing, right? No. Well, you called him, right? Yes. So you had no problem doing that, right? That's right. Did you ever have a desire on your own to go and find out what the Mormon church allowed in terms of sexual contact? <clears throat> yes. Why didn't you do it? I did. did. It? Pardon? I did. So did you go to a bishop? I went to Rachel. When did you go see Rachel about this issue involving sexual contact? It would have been August 2007 after Travis and I went all the way consensually and we were both awake. So you went to see her in August of 2007. You converted in uh, or were baptized in November of 2006, right? Yes. And you and Mr. Alexander are engaged in sexual contact between that time, November of 2006, until what? April of 2000 or August of 2007? Is that when it is? That whole time period. And during that whole time period, it never occurred to you to try to find out what the Mormon church allowed? Um, I did try to find out. Did you go to a bishop? No, definitely not a bishop. Did you try to read any of the literature that they have? I would read some literature, but not the pamphlet that you were reading from. There is a pamphlet that they have, right? Yes. And this pamphlet is available to everybody, right? Yes. And in fact, you were here when I was looking at it, and I was questioning Desiree Freeman, right? Yes. And this pamphlet is free, right? Yes. And it lays out the guidelines for what is acceptable sexual contact and not, right? Yes. And isn't it true that that pamphlet doesn't include anything about joking involving married people, does it? I haven't read the whole pamphlet, but the part that I read does not include that. It does include things that you are not to engage in oral intercourse, right? Yes. And any kind of intercourse, right? Yes. It says all sexual relations. Right? And in fact, it even talks about certain types of music that shouldn't be listened to, right? I don't recall that part, but that sounds right. And it also talks about what kind of videos or what kind of movies should be looked at, right? Yes. And you're saying that throughout this whole time, uh, from November of 2006 to August of 2007, you did not have the opportunity to review any of this and know any of that? Well, I didn't know it existed, so I guess then I wouldn't have had the opportunity. But if I'd known it was there, then I would have had the opportunity. Did you think that perhaps it would have been a good idea to go ask if these materials were available? No, I did not. <coughs> Rephrase. You were conflicted by the fact that you saw Mr. Alexander joking with somebody who you believed to be married, right? She was married, yes. You were conflicted because Mr. Alexander was joking <coughs> with somebody that was married. Okay? Better? Yes. And although they were just, they had never had any sexual contact, right? Yes, she's sexual. If she doesn't know that or not. Repaced. Even though you believe they had not had any sexual contact, right? At that point, that was my belief. Right. Yet, that's 
just people talking, yet you have no problems engaging in all this conduct that you've told us about during direct <coughs> examination. You have no problem engaging in that conduct, yet you're judging somebody for just talking. The testimony, she's never said she had no problem with it. State your question. Well, ma'am, you never sought counseling from a Mormon, whether it's a male or a female, about your sexual contact with Mr. Alexander, right? I did, but not during that time period. During the time period that we're talking about, you did not solicit aid from anybody in the Mormon church about what was the proper way to proceed, right? That's right. And the reason you didn't was because it was enjoyable, right? No, because, because I, didn't I didn't believe I was in the wrong. Well, you didn't, you weren't enjoying <coughs> what was going on with uh, Mr. Alexander? I did, but that's not why I didn't seek counsel. And it? in fact, the way you described it was that uh, he's somebody that you cannot stay away from sexually, right? Um, yes. And he described you as his kryptonite, right? Yes. And so it was a situation that you were mutually attracted, right? Yes. So is the reason that you were being so judgmental is because you were just plain jealous? Is that what was going on? No, I was considering a future with him, and if he was acting that way towards someone else's wife, I wondered how he would treat me as a wife. So if you were worried about how he was going to treat you as a wife, then why didn't you just leave him? Because I wanted to give him an opportunity to explain first. And you gave him the opportunity to explain, and it sounds like you believed him, right? Yes. And so, as a result of you believing him, you decided to continue in this sexual relationship, right? Yes. <clears throat> Please be back in the designated area at 125. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Have a nice lunch. record will show the jury has left the courtroom is serious you may step down counsel anything before lunch no Mary says. Ms. serious please take the stand Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Mr. Martinez, you may continue with cross-examination.
Ma'am, we were talking about the uh, telephone and that there were messages on there and then also on the MySpace email that there were messages on there, correct? Do you remember that? Travis's phone in MySpace, yes. And the um, messages could be characterized as flirtatious, right? Um, flirtatious and sexual. And uh, you really had no problem with that, though, did you? Um, what do you mean? Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at another I'm sorry, what number? 480. 480, no objection. 480 is admitted. Let's take a look at this. I only have a few more questions. I really, where, where I want to go next is, um, was Travis, we were about this, was Travis a flirt with women, with other people? Um, yes, and he was not secretive about it. So that was something that, I wasn't aware of that aspect right away when I first met him, which was in the MGM Grand. He was very cool, very calm. Um, and even there were people that had made comments saying, you know, why was he on such good behavior that night? And he said that he sort of, well, looking back on that, he said he kind of had an agenda. And because I came off as a, a calm person, he was sort of trying to mirror and match. But, um, you know, by nature, he's very open, uh, very outgoing, very flirtatious. Um, not that that's a bad thing at all. And so even though you saw these messages on his uh, phone, even though they were flirtatious, um, you still decided to break up with him, right? Not for that reason. Well, isn't that what you told us before the break, that that was the reason that you broke up with him because of these text messages? No, it's because he was sleeping with a bunch of people. You believe that he was sleeping with a lot of people, right? Yes. Do you remember telling us before the break that it was this text message, or during direct examination, that it was the text messages that were the reason for the breakup? Right. You did say that, though, right? Yes. I don't have. Okay. You and uh, Mr. Alexander went to Sedona and to the Grand Canyon with uh, Desiree Freeman and Dan Freeman, correct? Yes. Exhibit 481, you could recognize the people there and the occasion. Yes, I do. I don't see a date, but I recognize right. it. But you're in the photograph, correct? Yes. And you recognize the other people, correct? Yes. And it's a trip that you took. Well, was the picture is a photograph taken during the trip to Sedona, correct? Correct. When was it, when, generally speaking, when did you go to Sedona? I believe it was April 2007. And this is a true and accurate depiction of the four of you on this trip to Sedona, correct? Correct. I move for the admission of 481. No objection. 481 is admitted.
This is a photograph that was taken in Sedona, correct? Yes. And it shows your height, height relative to Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. Um, you're approximately the same height as he is, correct? He is three inches taller. Well, this shows it right here, correct? Yes. Uh, how tall you are, correct? Foundation, we don't know where they're standing or shoes they're wearing. The stained. Ma'am, this shows you on that particular day with Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. You have no re reason to believe that he was, that you were standing on a rock and he wasn't, right? Not that I recall, no. And with regard to Mr. Freeman, do you have a reason to believe that he was standing on a rock? No. And with regard to Desiree Freeman, any reason to believe or to think that she was standing on a rock? No. That shows the relative heights, correct? Yes. Ma'am, one of the things that we know about uh, Mr. Alexander was how his ambience was in a room, correct? Yes. Let me show you another exhibit. I move for the admission of Exhibit 482. Any objection? None that, none that we haven't previously lodged, Judge. 482 is Yes, and that's the other thing. I really, when you ask me if I was angry or outraged, I'm more angry and outraged that his life was taken and that he had so much potential, that he had so many things and projects that he was working on that, are, that some will get completed and some will never get completed. Um, he, he was a light and he had so many, he, he, he brightened a room when he walked in. He literally brightened the room. Like you could just tell when you could tell when Travis was whether you were what direct no matter what direction you were looking at you can tell when Travis showed up, because the the laughter got louder and you know the conversation got happier and just the whole energy of the room changed, and you know for for someone like that it almost seems like the world is a darker place now that he's not in it anymore, so I'm really angry about that. I can't imagine what his family is going through. I love my brother so much. And I know that he had a lot of siblings, and I just cannot imagine what it would be like to get a phone call to hear that something happened to one of my brothers. According to that particular excerpt in your statement, he was a great guy, right? Yes. And he was a great guy, uh, it appears, to everybody that seemed to come in contact with him, correct? Yes, it appears. And Nowhere during this conversation that you may have had with people of 48 hours did you mention this issue of him masturbating to pictures. Oh, definitely not. So the answer is no, you didn't, correct? That's correct. And it wasn't like he didn't do good things for you. He actually did a lot of, uh, or some things that were very nice, didn't he? Yes, wonderful things. Just uh, have you, or listen to, you tell us about one of those occasions. Mm -hmm. 
I move for the admission of Exhibit 483. No objection. 483 is admitted. Um, I just personally, I, I can't see any motive for myself to ever want to do this or inflict this kind of thing on Travis, um, someone who's been so generous, someone who's been so kind, and someone who has opened up his home, opened up his refrigerator on many times when I, when I didn't have enough money to go to the grocery store and, and fill up my own fridge. You know, it was, there were just so many things that he did, the little things. I, I came home from the airport once and my, he let me park my car in his garage so that it was safe while I was gone. And, and I showed up to get my car, and, and there was this, there was this bag, of, bag on, the, on the hood that said Cinnabon. And he knew that I liked Cinnabon. And I remember calling him before I flew out. Uh, I was flying out of Salt Lake. And, and um, in the Phoenix airport, there's, um, there's a Cinnabon um, stand. And I always get one before I go on my, my flight. And I, I remember lamenting a little bit, saying, Cinnabon's going to be closed when I get home because it's going to be late. And so he went out to the mall and got me Cinnabon so that I'd be able to have that when I got home. It's just little things that he did like that, um, thoughtful things as well. He looked up a whole recipe online for Cinnabon and printed it out on pink paper and folded it up in there and put it in there with that. And he gave me a $10 gift card for Cinnabon. So it's like it just little things like those were just that's just one example of so many little things that he's always done for me, and not just for me, but for everyone that he knew. And in fact, ma'am, after you moved, you actually thanked him for everything that he had done to you, right? Yes. Let's take a look at an exhibit. text messages. Yes, I recognize them. And you were the person that sent them, correct? Yes, this wasn't before I moved, this was after. Right, and uh, what date is indicated on there? April 18th, 2008. Move for the admission of Exhibit 484. Direction. Did you say no objection? No objection. This was after you were in Wairika, correct? Yes. This was when you were in Wairika doing your day-to-day -day activities, whatever they may be, correct? Correct. When you were not seeing Mr. Alexander on a daily basis, correct? Yes. This is after you had broken up with him, right? Yes. This was during a time when, uh, according to you, the fog had lifted, right? Yes. And this is after the time, after <laughs> you claim that there has been some physical violence, you wrote this, right? That's right. And we agree that the time is seven hours ahead, correct? Yes. And so it's on April 18th that you write this, and you say, <coughs> Travis, I thank you for being such an amazing friend. You are a rock, a light, and an inspiration. I love you dearly. You were still in love with him, weren't you? I wouldn't say in love, but I loved him very much. So when you say you love him dearly, that doesn't mean that you have any physical attraction to him. You just love him like a friend, correct? That's not true. 
Well, when you say you love him dearly, is that the same as saying that the way you love Matt McCartney, or is this a little bit different? Um, it's similar, but there was no more, no longer a sexual attraction with Matt McCartney. And but there was a sexual attraction with Mr. Alexander, correct? Correct. And uh, you indicate that you appreciate all of the ways you've gone out of your way for me, correct? You indicate that, right? Yes. And then you say thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Yes. This is not in line with what you've been, with the person that you've been talking to us about, is it? Um, yeah, it is. It's very consistent with how he was. Well, you've been telling us before that he was mean. Do you remember telling us that? Yes, he was also that. And you've been telling us that uh, in addition to being mean, he was somebody that, who physically abused you, right? Yes, he did. And that he would raise his voice to you, right? Yes, he did. Yet, once you're free of him, and after the fog has lifted, you're thanking him and telling him what an inspiration he is, right? Yes. That sort of, the way that is presented, that doesn't seem to correspond, does it? Objection on You've given us two versions, correct? Of what? Of Mr. Alexander. Objection on I will. I think I've given more than two versions. Well, you've given us one where we've just discussed about him being physically abusive and mean and loud to you, correct? Yes. And in fact, before, at, during the trial, you even referenced that he used to grill you, right? Yes. And yet, the writings that we have here don't support that, specifically exhibit number 484, now that you're away, doesn't support what you've been telling us, does it? Objection. Rephrase. This is at odds with what you're telling us Objection. before as to Mr. Alexander, right? Um, with, uh, at odds with what? With Mr. Alexander's portrayal that you wanted us to believe during direct examination. No, I believe I said during direct examination that he did many wonderful things and that he had amazing sights to him. But you don't ever mention in any of these text messages, for example, this one right here, all you can do is gush on him, over him and thank him, right? Yes, he flourished on compliments. Is that yes? I said yes. When you say that he flourished on uh, compliments, it appears that you're saying that you're only doing it in an sin insincere fashion because you want to shower them on him just because he wants them. At times they were a little insincere in that they were somewhat exaggerated, but he was a wonderful person well, many times. What you're saying here, though, is I, just this particular exhibit, number 484, when you're saying, or you're gushing, whatever the term you want to use on this, it just appears that, from what you tell us, that that's not true, right? Rephrase. Ma'am, when you say that you were um, sending these because Mr. Alexander liked them, that's what you said, right? No, I said he flourished with compliments. All right, use the word he flourished on compliments, right? Yes. And if he flourished on compliments, the way it sounds is that you were not sincere about the compliment. Well, hmm. I believe it was amazing. He was a rock to me. He was a light and an inspiration at one time. I did love him dearly. I still do. And he did go out of his way for me. And I wanted to express my gratitude. So with regard to this particular love, is that how you believe love should be shown like it was on the evening of June 4th of 2008? Objection. I demanded it. Sustained. Well, ma'am, here what, you've indicated that all of this is true. So is this one of the ones that was sincere or not? Um, I believe I was being sincere in this one. So this one, you are telling the truth? Yes. As part of uh, uh, what happened after uh, you, you killed Mr. Alexander, there was a memorial service, right? Yes. And you attended it, right? Yes. Uh, the memorial service was in Mesa, Arizona, correct? Correct. And uh, what time of the day was it? I don't remember. Was it in the morning or the afternoon? 
I don't remember it was daytime. I have no memory of that part. And many people attended, right? Yes. Uh, one of the people that attended was uh, Mimi, correct? Yes. You actually went up to Mimi, correct? Yes, I did. So even though that you say that you're shy, you actually were the person that approached her, right? Yes. And you talked to her about Mr. Alexander, correct? Briefly, yes. So that is a yes, correct? Yes. And it was during this conversation that you say that that's when you first learned that he was going to Cancun with her, right? Um, I can't remember because another woman had told me right before. He, he didn't, she didn't say her name, but I assumed it was probably Mimi Hall. So I don't remember if Cancun was discussed. Did you speak with Mimi Hall about her going to Cancun with Mr. Alexander? I don't remember if Cancun was discussed. But you could have discussed it, right? Could have, but it was very short, and I don't think Cancun came up, but it might have. I don't remember that. But it, it was at this memorial, whether it was from Ms. Hall or somebody else, that you, according to you, first learned about him going to Cancun with somebody else, right? Yes. Well, I assumed. Is that yes? It, I assumed. I didn't. I actually learned it from Detective Flores, but I assumed because of the way a woman named Brenda told me. So what you're telling us is that at the memorial service, do you know the date that that was? I think it was um, June 15th. At the memorial service, you did not learn that he went to Cancun with Mimi Hall. Objection doesn't make a compound question. Oh. I don't remember. I think I, I think I assumed it, but I got like solid confirmation from Detective Flores. So you assumed it at the time you met Miss Hall then? Um, I'm trying to think. I, th I might have spoken to Miss Hall before Brenda. I don't remember when Brenda came up to me. So what I'm asking though is, did you or did you not learn that Mr. Uh, Alexander was going to Cancun with Mimi Hall at this memorial service? I don't know if I definitively knew it, but I, I was pretty sure that she was the one. And why do you say that you were pretty sure? Is it because of a conversation that you had with Ms. Hall? Um, because of a conversation I had with Brenda. And based on the conversation with Brenda, you believe that that's when you learned about Mr. Alexander going to Cancun with Mimi Hall, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. You and he had discussed him going to Cancun before, right? Yes. And you were not, he didn't ask you to go, right? What was that? He did not ask you to go, correct? That's correct. But you knew he was going with someone, didn't you? Um, yes. Well, it, the trip allows for a second person on the ticket, so, so I you assumed. Knew he, you knew he was going for, with somebody, right? Yes. And you knew he was going with somebody back uh, on June 2nd of 2008, right? Um, yes, I assumed it was a babysitter. Well, I'm not asking you who you assumed it with. Did you know back on that date that he was going to go with somebody? Yes. And back on May 28th, of 2008. You also knew that he was going to Cancun, right? Um, yes. And you knew that he was going to Cancun with somebody else, right? Yes. And this was about the time, because of the telephone call of May 10th, that he was still talking to you um, about sex, right? Yes. And even, <clears throat> even though he was talking to you about sex, he was actually, you knew, going to go to Cancun with somebody else, right? Um, yes. Let me show you uh, an exhibit. And his going to Cancun with somebody else did not upset you, correct? No. And his going to Cancun and not inviting you did not upset you, right? No. Take a look at Exhibit 485 and see if you recognize this. Yes. 
This is actually a writing by you, correct? That's correct. And it was submitted at the time of the memorial service, right? Yes. And how did it work? Was it, there was a page there that you signed? How did it work? There was a photo album, sort of in a scrapbook, how I remember it, with a lot of blank paper around the different photos so that people could leave comments. You actually brought the photograph that's attached to this, right? I don't, I think it was already put together, but I emailed it to the person putting it together because that's one of my photos. So this is one of your photographs though, correct? Yes. And how it got there, maybe that you sent it to somebody and then they put it in the book, correct? I believe so. And then you actually signed it though, right? I didn't sign it, I just wrote in it. I didn't want to leave my name. In other words, this is your writing, correct? Yes. I move for the admission of the 45. No objection. 45 is admitted. Take a look at uh, Exhibit 485. It says, Travis, you're beautiful on the inside and out, doesn't it? Yes. Isn't that kind of a lie based on what you've told us here in court today? Objection, argumentative. Sustained, rephrased. That's not true based on what you told us here in court, right? Objection, argumentative. Oh, look. I believed um, that he had inner beauty, yes. So it is true. So you think somebody who masturbates to pictures of little boys is beautiful on the inside, right? I don't think that aspect of him is beautiful at all. I think it's sickening. Well, I'm asking you, you did write beautiful on the inside, and yet you knew, according to you, that he had this issue, right? Yes. And so if you write that, you've indicated that it was a problem for you, right? It was. And you indicated that you'd even obtain a pamphlet, correct, to give to him? Yes, too. And you also indicated that you believed that he needed help, right? He did need help. Right, and you've indicated that to us on direct examination a couple of times at least, right? That's right. But yet here you're right that he's beautiful on the inside, knowing all of that. Yes, he hated those parts of himself. Pardon? He hated those parts of himself. It's not who he wanted to be. Whether he wanted to be it or not, somebody who has those issues you still think is beautiful on the inside, and that's why you wrote it. I believe that he could get better. I'm not asking you if you believe that he could get better, ma'am. I'm asking you whether or not somebody is beautiful on the inside if they have the problem that you have told us about. Objection, ask and answer this about the third time. Overall. What was the question? Mike, could you read it back for her, please? I'm not asking if you believe if he could get better, ma'am. I'm asking you whether or not beautiful on the inside is prop. I'm sorry. I'm asking you whether or not somebody has beautiful on the inside, if it had that problem you told us about. I believed that he had aspects of himself that were beautiful and some that were ugly, just like I do. So what you're saying is this statement here that he was beautiful on the inside is a qualified statement. I don't know what you mean by qualified. Well, it doesn't tell the whole truth. It just tells part of the truth. Of course, this is a memorial book. Pardon? Of course, this is a memorial book. You didn't have to write it in that memorial book, right? I didn't have to. And you didn't have to go to the memorial service, right? That's right. One of the things that you told us was that, well, you and Mr. Alexander had an agreement, right? Yes. And this agreement, uh, according to you, was that even if the memorial service or the funeral was in Antarctica, the two of you would attend each other's funeral uh, depending on who, lived, who outlived the other, right? He said he would come to mind even if it was in Antarctica. Ma'am, I'm asking you whether or not you and he 
or whether or not you told us previously that you and he had an agreement to attend each other's funeral depending on who died first. It wasn't quite like that. Well, didn't you tell us that on direct examination that that was part of the reason that you went because you guys had this understanding? I didn't go to his funeral. I tried to go and I didn't make it. The memorial service? Um, that wasn't part of the agreement. Well, but you did mention that you believed that he would have done the same thing for you, right? Yes. But in terms of this attending the memorial service, if the situation were reversed, do you think that he still should have gone to your memorial service if he had killed you? Objection. Representative calls for speculation. What was the agreement, or what was your understanding of the agreement then? Um, I told him one time that I admired his speaking skills, and then if I ever passed away, he would... I, I would like it if he gave a eulogy at my funeral because I knew that he would edify me in a good way. How about with him? If he passed away before you, what was the agreement? It wasn't discussed, I don't think. Oh, so you didn't have any understanding whatsoever with regard to whether or not you would attend his uh, memorial service? It was more about my funeral. Well, do you remember telling us something different on direct examination? Um... I don't remember. Do you remember on direct examination telling us that you felt compelled to go because of this agreement that the two of you had? That's why I felt compelled to go. Right. Because you believed there was an agreement, right? Because he would have gone to mine. And you believe that that was sort of an unwritten agreement between the two of you. That's how you portrayed it to us on direct examination, right? The eulogy part was sort of an unwritten agreement. I'm talking about just actually going. I'm not talking about the eulogy. Isn't it true that in direct examination, the way you portrayed it to us was that the reason that you went was because you and he had talked about it and that you felt compelled to go based on those conversations? Yes. And those conversations included going to Antarctica, if that were the case, right? He said he would. And that's how much the commitment, that's how strong the commitment was to attend each other's memorial services, right? Um, I don't recall making a commitment to attend his services, but this is the reason I felt compelled to go. Because of the conversation you had with him, right? Yes. No one knew about this conversation that you had with him, right? No, it was in his office, just the two of us. Right, so it was just you and him, right? Yes. And so, if nobody knew about it, you really didn't have to go. And nobody would have been the wiser, right? That's right. But you made the choice to go, right? Yes, I did. You also write, you always told me that I never stopped believing in you, and I know that you always believed in me, right? That's what it says, right? Yes. You always believed in him, right? Yes, I did. Uh, even though, according to you, he would get this mean look on his face and he would come charging after you down the hallway, you still believed in him, right? Yes, that wasn't who he wanted to be. I'm not asking you if that's what he wanted to be. Did I ask you that, ma'am? No. I'm asking you whether or not you still believed in him if he, for example, according to you, threw you down and choked you. You still believed in him, right? I believed in his potential still, yes. So the answer is yes, right? Yes. And even though he may have been on the couch kissing with some girl in August of 2007, you still believed in him, right? Yes, I wasn't his girlfriend. Pardon? I wasn't his girlfriend. So yeah, of course, I still believed in him. You were his girlfriend in August of uh, 2007? I was not. I wasn't. So you still believed in him even though he was kissing on some girl and you still believed he was courting you at that time. You still believed in him. Well, it cheapened his efforts. I understand that it may have cheapened his... I still believed in his potential to of who he wanted to become. So it cheapened his efforts, right? Certainly. And um, if it cheapened his efforts, then perhaps he wasn't uh, believing in you as much as you indicate in this card or this writing, correct? Objection calls for speculations. What Mr. Allen 
vendor believe. It's the other way around. Overruled. Um, I think we're talking about different aspects of what we believed about each other. Well, you say that you never stop believing in him, right? Yes. And you never stop believing him, irrespective of what you've told us um, the issues were, right? That's right. And these issues that, according to you, he wasn't getting any help for, right? Um, I don't know if he well, was or not. I well, don't believe he was. He said he would. I don't believe he did. Right. So you know that he's not getting, according to you, your belief is that he's not getting help for any of these issues, right? Yes. He's not doing anything about it, right? I don't know that. Well, isn't that what your belief is? I'm asking about your belief. I'm not asking about what you know. I'm asking about your belief. Yes, she said she didn't know. I believe he was doing things, uh, not seeking professional help, but he said he spent a lot of time in prayer about it, and things like that. So you believe he was praying about it then, right? Yes. Do you know whether or not you believed he went to a bishop to talk about it? Um, he did talk to a bishop about his... Is that a yes or a no, ma'am? Well, it's, I really don't know. Okay. It says, thank you for sharing so much, and thank you for all your generosity. This world has been blessed because you have been here, right? Yes. So you believe somebody who does the sort of horrible act that you've described... Is a blessing to the world? He did bless the world in ways. I'm asking you, my question's a little different. You believe that somebody that did whatever it is that you allege he did is a blessing to the world? That is not a blessing to the world. So this wasn't true then? No, I just said that he did bless the world in ways. Ma'am, one of the other things that we know about you and him is that you and he had quite the relationship behind closed doors, right? Yes. And they're called private relationships for a reason, right? Um, yes. And so one of the things that you complained about on direct examination was that, well, nobody knew what your business or what your affairs were. Do you remember complaining about that? Um, I don't remember the context, but I may have said something to that effect. And it upset you that these interactions between you and him were behind closed doors. No. This, are you talking about this? So what, what, what activities are you referring well, to? Well, for example, you complained that when you went out, he didn't sort of uh, treat you in the way that, that indicated that you perhaps were closer to him than you were. That's correct. He wouldn't hold your hand, right? Usually not. He wouldn't uh, kiss you in public, according to you, right? He did as long as we weren't on our own home turfs. So, but it, in certain circumstances, he wouldn't kiss you when you were out there, right? That's correct. And all of this bothered you, didn't it? Um, it did bother me. Yeah, and it bothered you because, on the other hand, he's very attentive when the doors are closed, but not when people are around, right? Yes. And you could have, though, put an end to that, couldn't you? Yes. You could have left, you could have gone to Wairika, correct? Yes. Yeah, but you chose not to, right? Not right away. Well, you chose not to until April of 2008, right? I, that's when I did it. I made the decision prior to that. All right, you made the decision in March of 2008, right? Actually, it was Christmas 2007. Well, do you remember that we took a look at your journal in March of 2008, and that's when you told him that you were going to go to Wairika? That's right. And also, we know that you left in April of 2008, right? Yes. So, you're free to go at any time that you want, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was broke, so not really, but... Well, you had parents, right? Yes. They would have helped you if you wanted to go home, wouldn't they? The actually calls for speculation. Speculation. You asked your mom for help to move, right? Yes. And she came out there, right? Yes. She came out here to Mesa, correct? Yes. She flew, correct? She flew into Phoenix. 
uh, and whatever happened, but she went on her way shortly after she came out here, right? Yes. And so there was at least an indication based on that that they would help you and however, what your parents would help you in whatever way they could, right? Yes. So it wasn't a situation that you were stranded, was it? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I didn't know that they would help me until I was desperate enough to call her, and she would. She well, said she would. you indicated that you called and she responded, right? Yes. They wouldn't know that you needed their help unless you called, right? Um... Well, unless some, Matt called once, but unless I called and asked for that kind of help, I guess. When, on your first occasion that you called your mother, isn't it true that she agreed to help, right? Yes. And, in fact, the way to help was that she even came out here to try to help you load the truck, right? Um, I think I got the truck after she left. But her purpose was to come down here and help me load the truck and move. You just didn't have the truck at the time, right? Not yet. And so it seems like when you say that, well, you protest and say, well, you know, I was sort of stuck here in Arizona. You weren't really stuck here in Arizona, were you? I don't know. I mean, my parents have been financially capable at times and other times not. So it, at the time I called, they were able to help me. They were in a position to help me. And so they did. The only time that you asked them, at least as it uh, involves this case, the only time that you asked them, they were able to provide some help, right? Yes. And uh, in fact, when you got to Wairika, you even had a place to stay, right? Yes. You didn't want to stay with your parents, though, right? There were no bedrooms there, that's right. So you didn't want to stay with your parents, right? No, I didn't. You preferred to stay with your grandparents, correct? Yes. And so you had a place to go to, right? Yes. And, in fact, you could get a job there if you wanted to, right? I did get a job there. Well, you could if you wanted to, right? In fact, you started to work at Casa Ramos, according to you, right? Well, it depends on who hires. I mean, I searched and searched and hunted, and I did not get a job for a while. And I finally was hired somewhere. You did get a job at Casa Ramos, didn't you? Yes. And this was in Wairica, correct? Yes. And when you were working at Casa Ramos, you had your own money, right? Yes. Nobody took it away from you, right? Um, no. And in fact, uh, you weren't lending or giving any money to Mr. Alexander at that point, right? Um, I was paying back a debt that I owed him. But that's not giving money to him, is it? Yes, I was giving it willingly. Well, if you have a debt that's not a, and, if, and you give money for that, that's not a gift, is it? It was not a gift. It was a repayment that I was right. giving him. And in fact, the terms were pretty loose on that, correct? Very loose. And whatever you could afford, he basically would accept, right? Yeah, he said to try to keep it to at least $100 a month, but pay more anytime you can pay more. It, they were loose. it was a loose agreement, right? Yes. He wasn't putting any financial pressure on you, right? Uh, not at first. When you say not at first, that implies that he was putting pressure on you at some point, right? Yes, he did. And uh, it was a, an amount mentioned? No, it wasn't. And was there ever the threat of him going to court to get the money? No. And in fact, he actually even was trying to help you with the car, uh, the one that had lost the transmission and had all those problems when you started to tow it, right? What do you mean? Well, he was trying to find out how who was responsible for that on your behalf, wasn't he? Um, I think I was. I had called the law firm. He called a law firm. We were waiting for calls back on it. But he attempted by calling a law firm, right? I don't remember if he called his directly or... I mean, I know that I called attorneys on it, and I think he was doing his own research on it as well. And, but he... And when you told him that this had happened, he wasn't upset with you, was he? No, he wasn't. And in fact, when you told him that this happened, he tried to do the best that he could for you, right? Because yes. you wrote that he felt bad for you, right? Yes. And in fact, the way he handled that situation, you actually, in your journal, called him your hero, right? Yes. So it appears that you're in Wairika, 
This individual, Mr. Alexander, is in the Mesa area, and there doesn't seem to be any other tie other than this sexual bond that the two of you seem to have, right? Well, that and the car, I guess. Well, but the car was a loose bond, wouldn't you agree? Yes. You could mail the payment and not talk to him ever, right? That's right. And you could conceivably pay him off uh, in one payment, not that you probably would, but you could in one payment, and that would be the end of it, right? The end of our communication? No, the end of the issues involving the car, right? Yes. And you wouldn't have to communicate anymore if you really didn't want to, right? Um, after the car was paid and I had the title, no, we wouldn't have to. Right. And so, but you did have this sexual bond, right? Yes. And it appeared that you wanted to be with him as much as he wanted to be with you. Um, that would be accurate. And so that when we talk about or when you tell us things like, well, when I was over at Sky and Chris Hughes's house approximately a week after you met him, and you indicate that, well, that you had oral sex, and you said that you were uncomfortable with that. Do you remember that? Yes. Well, you were pretty attracted to him, weren't you? My attraction didn't develop that quickly. So, are you saying that you did that even though you didn't want to? Yes. And did you tell him that? No. Did you think that he was a mind reader and would know that you didn't want to do that? No. And one of the things that you said that was kind of striking about that was that when he was performing oral sex on you that he said, you said, he sure knew what he was doing. Do you remember saying that on direct examination? Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. Well, doesn't it take one to know one? I'm suggesting you're not arguing that it's improper. Thank you. How do you know he was so good unless you had previously been exposed to that activity? I was previously exposed to that activity so, in my prior relationships. So there wasn't anything wrong with, with him being uh, experienced in that area, it was there? Not, to, not in my opinion, no. No. So when you said that, that he sure was experienced in that area, you didn't mean to be saying that that was a negative thing, right? No. And um, the other thing that you said, well, really wasn't your cup of tea that time, right? That's correct. You could have stopped at any time and said, I don't want to see you anymore, right? Yes. Because that was really the first time you had ever seen him, right? Um, no, that would have been our second. No, I mean alone, in private. Second. Um, you had had some sort of sexual contact with him before that? No, no sexual contact. I'm talking I'm, alone, private. I'm talking about sexual contact. <coughs> okay. Based on what you what happened there and the sexual contact at that point, you said, well, I wasn't really that interested in him at that point, right? You just said that. Um, there was an interest, but my the deep level of my attraction had not developed to its extent. Okay. So you weren't that, that attracted to him, right? Would that be fair to say or not? Um, well, when you say that attracted, like, I was attracted to him, but it felt like it was just too soon, is all. Well, you said my attraction hadn't developed to that point yet, which appears to say that you weren't attracted to him to have sex with him at that, on that occasion, right? Not yet to that level. So you keep saying that, yeah, I'm just talking about that particular point. I just want you to focus on that point. At that point, you were not sexually attracted to him, right? I wouldn't say that. Oh, so you were sexually attracted to him? On some level, I believe I was. And so, being sexually attracted to him, this was an activity that was enjoyable to you, right? Um, it otherwise could have been, but I just felt uncomfortable. Well, you're saying you felt uncomfortable, and are you saying then that it was not an enjoyable um, situation for you? Like internally, no. So therefore, physically, I wasn't able to enjoy myself, but there was nothing outwardly wrong with the scenario because, I mean, well, all the elements were there other than those things. If you weren't um, enjoying it internally and if you weren't enjoying it externally, it appears that what you're saying is that you're not enjoying it at all because there's only the internal and the external, right? Yes. Overall, to me answer. Yes. So you, 
So you weren't in, you, you were not enjoying it, that is what you're saying. Once it progressed to the oral sex, I was no longer enjoying it. You could have told them to stop though, right? Yes. But you didn't, right? That's right. You never showed any uh, indication that this activity was unwelcome, right? That's right. There was no way for him to know that this activity was unwelcome, right? That's right. In fact, I think I acted like the I liked is, it. Yes, right. That's right. And so, after that, and really what we have for that sort of um, assertion, all we have is your word, correct? Yes. We don't uh, have, for example, any um, video or anything like that that would show us what happened then to see whether or not you were enjoying this particular activity, correct? Um, that's correct. And with regard to the other time, the, uh, the uh, situation in the car, again, you indicated that you were uncomfortable with it, right? Um, somewhat, yes. If you were uncomfortable the first time, and you, and you know, you have the ability to say no, you could have stopped the second time, right? Yes. That was a choice that you made, correct? Yes. For whatever reason, you made the choice to be with them that second time, right? Yes, I did. And so when you talk about, well, I was uncomfortable about it, I felt bad about it, about it, I felt bad about it, or whatever the terms are that you use, at some point, even though you felt that way, um, that was your responsibility to let the other party know that perhaps you weren't into it as much as they were, right? Um, what do you mean? Well, you mean if I didn't want to proceed with it? Pardon? Then it would have been my responsibility to tell him. Right. You, That's you, could, right. you could have told him no, right? I could have, yes. And you've done that before in your lifetime, haven't you? Um, yes. And uh, one of the things that uh, you kept saying on direct examination was that, well, you know, I felt, I felt that I liked him and didn't want to hurt his feelings or something like that. Do you remember saying something like that, that you didn't want to hurt his feelings? Yes. Saying no to you, the fact that you would have said no you think would have hurt his feelings? I felt that way, like it would have been a blow to his ego. So you felt that it would have been a blow to his ego then if you would have told him no, right? Yes. Well, who cares what about his ego? I did. You cared about his ego even though you had only known him for approximately two weeks? Yes. So does that mean that you were more invested in him than you're telling us? In other words, at that point, you really had strong feelings in him for him? They weren't strong, but there was an attraction there. So you were attracted to him then? Yes. And you wanted this sort of activity to continue, right? What kind of activity? Sexual activity. Um, well, I didn't stop it. Well, when you say you didn't stop it, it just sounds again like you're saying it was all him and not you, right? No, it takes two to tango. That's right. And it was a mutual activity, wasn't it? Yes. Let's uh, see what you have to say about that. Move for the admission of Exhibit 486. No objection, Your Honor. Did you say 
Like if you're moving away and you're saying you want to end this unhealthy relationship, and yet A, you're still making plans to get together and travel, and B, you're still showing up for sex. Yeah, it, um, it was hard to tell Travis no. Um, he would call me at night, and we would have long conversations, and he would tell me the things that the things that he would like to see happen when he came up to visit me, to put it in a G-rated manner, um, and the things that he wanted to do um, as far as traveling and where we would go and what we would do. And then it wasn't, like, I wasn't the reason, the agenda for him coming up, but that was a big part of it. He was going to continue on to Washington, see friends there, and then come all the way back down and see the Pacific Coast Highway as well. It eventually became sex. Was it mutual? It was always mutual. You did indicate there that it was always mutual, right? That's correct. So that means, for example, that when you and he were involved the very first time, that it was mutual, right? Yes, it was. And when you were involved any time after that, it was also mutual, right? I believe it was. So when you tell us that you, he made you, that you felt like a used piece of toilet paper, well, that you're sort of telling us that at that point that it wasn't mutual, that somebody was taking more than they were giving. Um, no, it was still mutual at that point. Even though you felt that way, you can still say that it was a mutual kind of thing. Yes. Right? When I told him to stop, he did. Pardon? When I told him to stop, he did. So any time that you would ask him to stop, he would stop, right? Um, except the one time in May 2007. And, but in the statement that we just heard in Exhibit 486, you did indicate that it was always mutual, right? Yes. You never indicated that there was ever a problem, right? That's right. Ma'am, one of the things that uh, we know is that uh, there was this uh, text message that you received while you were at the Grove. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. And this was uh, sometime in November of 2006, right? That's right. And this is what you told, you told us that you were at some sort of meeting or something at a restaurant, right? Um, we were first at a Super Saturday, and then we, a group of friends and I, business associates, we all went to a restaurant. What was the name of the restaurant? I don't remember. What was the name of the city? Anaheim. And you were in, a, in Anaheim, and you were at this restaurant. Who else was sitting there? Um... Michelle was sitting across from me. I think Lenore was there. Um, I was still kind of new, so I don't remember all the names, but I think my friend Jared was sitting to my left. And I mean, I can picture faces, but I don't remember their names. There was a whole long table of people. And you received this text message, right? Yes. And at that time, you indicated to us that you had a flip top phone, right? That's right. And basically, when you receive a text message, what would be required is for you to open the, the phone to take a look at it, right? Yes. And in addition, you would have to take an extra step, right? Yes. You would have to take a step to take a look at the text message, right? Yes. And you said that you were somewhat unaware of what was in that text, that you were unaware of what was in that text message, right? Yes. And that you went ahead and that you opened it, right? Yes. Did anybody see it? Um, well, I don't know if Jared saw it. I don't think he did. I flipped it shut real quick and then looked around right. to make sure nobody was looking. Because you were able to recognize what it was, right? Yes. And you found it offensive, right? Not at all, actually. So you, went, you thought it was okay then? Uh, yes. And so when you were telling us about how it was that you received this, you didn't mean to tell us that you were offended by it, right? Um, no, I was not offended. And in fact, it was something that you liked, right? I did like it, yeah. And it was something that he was showing you attention, and so looking at it was something that, that for whatever reason, um, at least indicated there was a relationship, a partial relationship there for me, right? Yes. And you never told him, don't ever send me anything like that, right? No. 
Um, you never indicated to him afterwards, I'm embarrassed by that sort of activity, don't do that, right? I did not say that. And in fact, you were so happy, I would say, well, weren't you so happy with that activity that you actually took the time, the effort, and the trouble to download it? Um, I took the effort and the trouble to download all the photos on my phone at once. Well, you knew that that was on your telephone, didn't you? Yes. That's not something that you forget, right? Um, no. And in fact, there were other pictures that were involved at other times that were deleted, right? On my phone? Yes. Yes. And um, in this particular case, though, this actually went on to the hard drive that was damaged that we've heard about, right? That's right. And that hard drive was available for your enjoyment, right? Until it broke, yes. And, but you could access whatever <laughs> photographs that you wanted, including the picture of Mr. Alexander's penis, right? Yes. And um, you also sent him pictures of yourself, right? Yes. And you sent him photographs of yourself topless, right? Um, yes, I did. You were not offended by you were not offended by the fact that you were sending him photographs. In other words, that wasn't a, a problem for you, right? Um, not the types that I was sending. I don't think I showed my face in the photos. But you did show your upper chest area, correct? Um, I believe there were photos, several of that nature. And there were three of them, right? I don't remember. His phone? Yes. And you used your uh, telephone to take the pictures? Yes. And even doing that, you took the trouble to then download those also onto your computer, right? Um, I might have. Well, you're familiar with these photographs that came from this computer, right? Um, no, we couldn't find the pictures that you're referring to. when. Okay, so <laughs> but you didn't see anything wrong or anything untoward with you sending in pictures and him sending you pictures, right? No, I didn't. And in fact, it was almost like it was a learning process for both of you, right? Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Well, you and he were experimenting, correct? Um, you mean with the camera phone? Well, no, just uh, sexually speaking. Um, I don't, I don't know what you mean by experimenting, but we just, I mean, we were sexual. Okay. Well, let's talk about something that was on the May 10th, 2008 conversation that you had with him, okay? Okay. And while they're looking at that, ma'am, I'm going to show you exhibits numbers Do you recognize the person in those? Um, yeah. That's you, correct? 
Yeah, this is me just prior to my uh, surgery for breast right. implants. Okay. That Daryl took. And your surgery was in May of 2006, right? Um, June 2006. Okay. I move for the admission of exhibits number 425 and Ma'am, you indicated that you sent photographs to Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And uh, these are part of the photographs that you sent to him, right? Those were taken before I met him. But you actually sent them to him, didn't you? I don't believe I would send him those. He wanted to see them, and I was too embarrassed to show him my pre-surgery breasts. And so it's okay. You felt a lot better once you had your surgery then, right? Um, not at first, but ultimately, yes. But you did take these photographs, right? Yes. And you kept these photographs, right? Um, I guess I did. They're there. Right. And uh, the only purpose for these photographs is of a sexual nature, right? No, they're medical photos. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Objection. Let me answer the question. Your objection? To the relevance, it has nothing to do with the, her relationship with Mr. Alexander. Overruled. You may answer the question. No, they were just before shots for my surgery, just for that purpose. And Judge, I move for the addition of exhibit 47. No objection. 47 is admitted. K1? I'd never, I've heard of it obviously, but I've never used it. <laughs> you know, I had never used it uh, until, and I'd always heard of it until one day I just thought, because it's so cliched and people make fun of it and, you know, but it's great stuff. No, oh, it's awesome. There's nothing else. Did you get you now? No, no, no. I you stick it baffling. Oh, does that thing work? It seems so thick. Oh, you mean the lotion? Oh, no, I didn't do jelly. Oh. I mean, well, it works well, but it doesn't work in the world of KY. Yeah. And KY is good for that, so it's, like, good for you. I don't mean, like, it's beneficial, but it's better. It's the best thing for you because it's designed specifically for that purpose. It's best for your skin. It's, it's okay to go on the inside and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, see the other stuff really nothing really like I've used baby oil in the past, but it's, it doesn't hurt, but it's not the best thing because it's mineral oil, you know. So it appears that in terms of the, at least in terms of the KY, 
you were the one that introduced Mr. Alexander to it, right? Yes, that's right. And it was used as part of these sexual uh, encounters that the two of you had. Yes. And you introduced that into the relationship because it was enjoyable to you, right? It made our activities more enjoyable. So they were enjoyable to start with, and this just enhanced them, right? Um, most were enjoyable to start with. Pardon? Most were, the first time you did. I'm just asking about the KY. You introduced the KY into the relationship to make it more sexually enjoyable, right? Um, yes. And in fact, before that, your experience had been with baby oil, right? That's right. And at least as to Bobby Juarez, that's what was involved. That's what you used with him, right? Probably. I don't remember that far back, but definitely with Matt. So when we're talking about the level of experimentation in this case, it looks like the both of you were experimenting together sexually, right? That's right. So that when we hear things like, well, I felt like a prostitute, that's not exactly true, right? When you say that you felt like a prostitute, that's at odds with what you're telling us or what we're hearing here about the KY. Um, well, you're talking about two different incidents, so yes, it would be at odds. So your, your participation, if you will, in these activities was equal to his, right? Wasn't it? Yes. <clears throat> so any derogatory statement such as, I felt like a prostitute, isn't really what was going on, representative of what's going on, right? Um, it was, but it was my fault for feeling that way because I allowed it. Well, I know that you allowed it and you felt that way, but, and you say that you felt like a prostitute, but when we hear, for example, this, um, partial clip of this sexual conversation, it looks like you're the one that's moving it along, as opposed to him. Is that a question? It is a question. What's the question? The question is, isn't it true that you were the one that was moving it along? Um, I'd say it was mutual. Well, if it's mutual then, there, sh there is no, I guess, um, suggestion then for any reason why you should feel like a prostitute if it's mutual then, right? I didn't feel like a prostitute during, just afterward I did. Well, this is suggestive of you being as much of a participant in these activities as he was, right? Yes, and I was. And so you indicated on two occasions on direct examination that you felt like a prostitute, right? I believe referencing Ehrenberg, yes. And in Ehrenberg, you said that that's when you felt like one, correct? Not when, after Ehrenberg, after thinking about it, and he didn't call me for three days, I thought, put, you know, hotel room, all that. Just right. kind of felt that way. And then, additionally, you also said that you felt like that after uh, the baptism, right? Um, no, I think after that I said I felt like a used piece of toilet paper. And you didn't convey that to him, did you? No. Did you also say that you felt like a prostitute when he came over to your house and engaged in oral sex on the porch? Is that the other time? If I did say that, that would be accurate. And so, if you did feel like that, and remember you even referenced a piece of chocolate being thrown your way, do you remember that? Yes. And then you said, well, I felt kind of like a prostitute. Do you remember saying that now? Yes. So, that was already when you were in Mesa, right? Living in Mesa, right? That's right. That's after you had broken up with him on June 29th of 2007, right? Yes. That's after you and he had had sex many times, right? Yes. That's after you and he had already started using the KY, right? Yes. And so how is it that you can say, I felt like a prostitute, if you're the one that's sort of moving the relationship ahead? Well, your question doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to you. Why is that, ma'am? Because you're moving the relationship ahead by providing the KY, right? Um, I don't know. We would have used something else if it wasn't KY, so no. Well, you might have used something else if it wasn't KY, but you provided the something else, didn't you? The KY. 
In this case, I did, yes. Well, is, we're not talking about any other cases, ma'am. We're talking about this case. You were the one that had the KY or brought it into the relationship to, to make it better, right? To facilitate our activities. Sure. And that would make them better if it facilitated your activities, right? Yes. And yet, you're telling us that. And on the other hand, you're telling us, well, I felt like a prostitute. Which one is it? Well, when he jizzes on my face and throws candy my way and walks away without a word, it kind of feels like I was a prostitute. And when we're mutually going through sexual activity and there happens to be KY there, it's mutual. And you're saying that the offensive thing here was the jizz on your face, right? Um, I didn't say it was offensive because I knew it was coming and I willingly participated in it. Well, no, but that's sort of how you're making it sound like it's something that you didn't want, right? Um, if I didn't want it, then I wouldn't have done it. Well, let, let's see what um, a text message that, that you actually sent him involving that activity. Let's take a look at uh, another exhibit. Does. Take a look at those. Yes, I remember this. And um, this, these are text messages that you sent out referencing mm -hmm. the particular sex act that we've been talking about, right? No, this took place in his bedroom, not on the well, porch. But it, it talks about the same sex act, doesn't it? Oral sex, doesn't it? Um, oral sex, ejaculating on the face, yes. Okay. I move to the admission of exhibit number 489. Forty nine is admitted. Let's take a look at exhibit four eighty nine. Ma'am, the date on that is uh, January 18th of uh, 2008, correct? Yes. And again, we've already talked about the times that this is seven hours too fast, correct? That's correct. And 
it does say that it's an incoming message, right? Uh, yes. Which means, you previously told us, that incoming means that it's you that is sending this text message, right? That's right. And then, this is what the text message reads. We'll do... The reason I was asking about later tonight is because I want to give you a nice BJ. Uh, BJ stands for what? Blowjob. And blowjob means, without getting weight, well, blowjob means that you put your mouth on his penis, right? Yes, oral sex. Right. And in addition to it, you say, and I'd like a generous facial in return, right? Yes. That means that you want him to ejaculate on your face, right? That's correct. One of the things that we talked, that you talked about previously, feeling like a prostitute, involved a situation where he came over to your house, right? Yes. On the porch, right? That's right. And this is what happened, what is said here in this exhibit, right? Um, this is a different event, but just that part, yes. It may be a different event, but it's the same act, correct? Yes. Um, and then on one occasion, he just did it, and on a, another occasion, he actually is when he left the chocolate, right? Yes. And what you're saying is you found the other one and you felt like a prostitute even though you're, you're the one that's asking for him to do that on January 18th of 2008, right? Um, this is another night, but yes. So I'm not asking him to do those two things that you just referenced. I'm asking, we went over, I went over to his house. We were in his bedroom, on his bed. Right. That but, kind of thing. But, you're, but it's the same act, isn't it? Yes. And so you want him to do to you what happened on the porch, right? Um, same act. Yes. Well, no, I didn't want to kneel like on my porch and have him walk away from me when he was done. But I'm talking about the sexual act itself. Isn't it the same thing? Yes. And so yet one of them you describe as leaving you feeling like a prostitute, yet this one, which is the same thing, you're, you're, you're requesting it, right? Um, yes. Well, no. Not, I don't know what you mean by same thing. If you're talking about jizz on your face, it's the same thing. As far as the context, it's completely different. Right. What you're talking about is geography, right? Um, geography, mood, setting, and right. all you're, that. You're talking about one being on the porch and this one being in his house, right? Um, yes. Ha putting aside geography, that one happened in, in the front of the porch and one happened in his house, isn't it the same act? Yes, it is. And this is one that you are requesting, right? That's right. And that's, we know that because you say, what do you say, right? Yes. And actually, then he says, or we could just grind, right? Um, I think I said that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can, then you say that, or we can just grind, correct? Yes. And he's saying something to the effect of, that's a good close, right? Right. So we can get our terms straight. Grinding is a sexual term for those in the Mormon community, correct? Um, well, I think it is. Usually Mormons typically do it with their clothes on, but we did it without our clothes. And when you say that they did it, do it with their clothes on, that means that they rub their genitalia together, correct? And they That's, call it grinding, correct? Yes. Um, but you and Mr. Alexander did it without your clothes on, right? Yes. And was KY involved in this grinding activity? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And it would involve, if you will, sexual intimacy, correct? Yes. All right. Yes, please be back in the designated area at 320. Please remember the admonition, you are excused.
Thank you. Please be seated. Ms. Arias, you can stay at the um, table. I'm going to bring the jury in. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to recess for the evening. I'm going to ask that you return tomorrow morning at 10.15. Will that create an issue for anyone coming in 15 minutes early? If so, please don't hesitate to let me know. All right, tomorrow morning, 10.15. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Have a nice evening. Please be seated. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Mr. Nermy, did you have anything else you wanted to put on the record? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, a couple of issues regarding um, Ms. Arias and uh, that directly relate to her health and ability um, to be prepared for trial. One is that Ms. Arias has not, um, throughout the course of this trial, uh, had access uh, two lunches, the sheriff's office has not provided them to her, and my first request is that uh, this court order that they do so. My second request related to that is um, related to the to the uh, migraine she's having and the and the feeding uh, therein that we and I misspoke a little bit earlier about 4:20, but as long as we're out of here uh, done by 4:30, as opposed to letting it go past, we should be. Uh, fine in that regard, just as long as we do make 4.30 a drop dead time. All right, as we discussed earlier, I believe the Sheriff's Office has agreed to provide lunches, and I will inquire and let you know tomorrow. Anything else, Council? No, thank you. 10.15 tomorrow. Thank you. Thank We're you. adjourned. <laughs>